when purchasing a new uh, lathe, hobby lathe or whatever, and I'm talking about the ones that are in the 500 pound class, 11 inches max and small, um, you're going to have to set it up and level it. And this is where, to do the job right, this is where your most expensive tools are going to come in. And some of these things may be a one-time usage, okay? So, what you're going to have to gather up, you know, if you're contemplating buying a lathe, or you have a lathe, and you're finding that no matter what you do, when you're turning something, you're getting taper and stuff in there. Um, a lot of people adjust the head, and I don't really think that's a good idea, you know. Or if you can live with a thousandths taper over six inches or something, you know, that's fine too. But um, I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing and my thoughts on it and what I got to do this. The lathe isn't here yet. It should be two or three weeks till I get it. But first thing is, I purchased a... Uh, 12 inch lathe, it weighs about 500 pounds, and I got the stand. The stand's going to be a sheet metal thing, and basically two cabinets with a sheet metal divider attached to hold it together. So, short of getting an industrial lathe with a cast iron base, and you're going to have flex play, and you're going to have to level it. Some people do a lot of things, they either build or weld a, a, a thing under the stand and then level it that way or whatever. What I decided to do uh, in terms, the first thing you're going to have to do is figure out how you're going to level it. What I'm going to do is drill and tap half inch 13 holes in the cabinet. Now on the heavy end or the headstock end, which would be the left side, I'm going to put four of these feet in the cabinet. On the other end, either in the middle or offset far to the right, to give it a balance point, it would be offset, maybe not on center, I'm going to put two more of these feet in that cabinet. That way, this end I'm going to have dead level and I'm going to like play with the back end and the ways to get to twist out and level it out. So you're going to need like six or eight of these feet, depending on how you're going to go about it. Some people just make a frame that they drop the cabinets in and put four on each corner and level it that way. Now what we're going to do, or what my plan is, is to level the cabinet, because no matter what, your floors are not level. I don't care where you are. You know, the concrete floors in my garage have a pitch to them. I know that. So I bought this from Enco, and it's a half inch 13, uh, little foot, steel foot, and it's got a ball in there. So if there's any pitch, you know you can you'll you'll have play in it. Okay, if you've got a really uh, out of square floor or uh, uneven floor, this little ball in here is nice, and it just it'll set it straight. Other than the rigid thing that you know you might be putting a weight on on one side. So I got these at Enco. They have different sizes, different types. I got like six of them. So once you've decided how you're going to level it, the one basic tool you'll, you will need, but you already probably have, is a little mag base and a test indicator. That's are going to need that. So that's another thing, but this is something you're going to use more than just for leveling a machine, so no big deal. I covered them under indicators. Um, the idea is to try to level the base, set the machine down, then we're going to check the machine, both level and how the spindles line to the ways, and probably what I'm going to do to fine tune it is shim underneath the base of the lathe on top of the, uh, like when you bolt it to the cabinet, say the cabinet's level, if it's really off, we'll fool with the cabinet some more. But then to fine tune it and take a thousandths or so out, you're probably going to have to put metal shims because when you bolt down the lathe, it's going to put tension and maybe twist. So anyway, for that purpose and also just general purpose, shim stock. And again, I got this on Amazon. It's not that expensive. And they're just uh, 
these sheets of metal in different thicknesses and you're going to need some shears or tin snips to cut them and you cut little shims to fit up underneath. I'll do more of that later and what it is I believe they give you two sheets there are thousands, thousands and a half, two thousands, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve and fifteen thousandths thick and I think you got I well, only got one sheet of each, 12 different sheets. But, you know, you could probably make the shims aren't going to be that huge. And you cut the material and say you got a shim 20,000, you just cut two tens, put it up under there. So shim stock, that's another thing I suggest that you get. Um, now when you're leveling the lathe, uh, the level itself, okay, uh, a carpenter's level or any kind of little basic level isn't going to hack it. You need a machinist level. Or, like I found on uh, Amazon, uh, it's called an engineer's level. And what this is, this is a 12 inch level. Now the reason I need a 12 inch level is to go across the ways with it. And get over the V, that little V notch on the ways, you want to be on the flats. So, also with the level, you're going to probably need a set of one, two, three blocks. And what these are is precision ground, you know, well within the thousandths. It measures one inch thick, two inches wide here, three inches wide here. And what you're going to do is stand these blocks not. I got these, you can get these online, they're not they're terribly expensive. I needed them at a place I worked for the setup, we had to have our own. And I use them there, I don't work there anymore, I don't use these anymore. These are more of a milling setup for a milling machine, but they're a handy item to have around. Especially if you got to measure, if you got to measure an exact one inch or something, two or three. So what we're going to do is put the blocks on the uh, ways across the lathe and that's why you kind of need a 12 inch level you know a smaller one isn't going to do it and then the level will go on the blocks like this and then you adjust the lathe front to back you know that way so that's another machinist tool like I said you may only use it once but they're not a, you know, they're a good thing to have around. You can use these when you're inspecting parts and that on, on a flat surface or something. Uh, so one, two, three blocks are going to be kind of necessary. And don't buy them used. Uh, they're not that expensive. Get them new. That way you know they're not dinged up or, or, or damaged or been abused in some way. Um, that's another thing like your indicators and, and your dial calipers used ones uh, you know you never know you never know if there's a hidden defect okay back on to the level now like I said a carpenter's level ain't gonna, ain't gonna hack it you need a machinist level or this, this here is called an engineer's level that's how they list it on Amazon and it's 12 inch and what this is is this is calibrated uh, you can read 5,000 on it and how that works is we'll zoom in here on the scale there if you look at the little lines I believe if the bubble moves from one line to the other it's 5,000 so in other words if you were a one line off you put 5,000 under this it would lift it up this thing is extremely sensitive, okay? The only thing in the house I got is the pool table that's close to level. And it was like 15,000 soft, which after 10 years sitting there, I, I can see why. But uh, usually at work, you can go and find them like a stair level. They're expensive, okay? The six inch ones, uh, will run you 
almost $200 for a new set or something. You find used ones. Now, the thing about used ones, even though they're starts, this is what I'm going to tell you. I went into the tool room at work or the inspection room, and they got two levels in there. They got two stair machinist levels. And I said, man, all right. And the one guy found a 12-inch one. He found a 12-inch one in a box underneath some papers in the back on a cabinet. So I said, great, man. I don't have to buy this expensive tool. I can level my machine. I go and look. The 12-inch one, I take it out. It looks all right. It's not dinged up or nothing. And I set it down on a, on a granite block in there or an inspection table. And I look. And I can't see the bubble. So I'm looking, I'm looking. It's damaged and the water drained out. So there's no bubble in it. Okay? Somehow somebody broke the bubble part of the level. You know, even though the underside was nice, like here, nice and clean and, and no nicks or nothing. Alright? And that's the thing, you got to be very delicate with these things. You bang this against any metal. It'll ding. So I said, all right, I'm going to have to get one. I said, well, let me see if the 4-inch one, I can take the 6, or they had a 6-inch. I take the 6-inch one and use that in tandem with the long one I have to buy. Because you have to have 12 inches or so to go across the length. So I take that one, put it on the inspection table, and I'm looking. There was a huge gouge, and you can see where somebody stoned it. There was a big gouge in it. You know, a real big one. So I put it on a table, set it one way, you know, and the table's not level. So I said, all right, it's, say three notches off. So if you take the level, turn it around, set it in the same spot, it, it should be three notches off the other way. It wasn't. It was like six off. So I said, the level's damaged, dinged. It ain't worth the shit, okay, unless you go and regrind the whole bottom of the level. So that's why when you see a lot of these used pieces of equipment, kind of buyer beware, you know, I, you know, say you could get one for half or less than half price of a new stair, which is still a lot of money, um, you're at risk. So I found this level on Amazon, engineer's level, and it's brand new and, you know, it works, okay? I checked it out up, like I said, the only thing level, I, I put this on a kitchen cabinet, forget it, the bubble goes all the way to one side. This very sensitive instrument. I had to take it up to the pool table, and the pool table is telling me it's got a 15,000, you know, from one end to the other slant. So, it works, okay? It's like 80 some odd dollar, almost a $90 item on Amazon. Now, I was looking at this probably going to use this to level my machine and I may never use this thing again so it's kind of a lot of money to tie up but when I was putting it in my shopping cart like on Amazon do this preferred buyer buyers club whatever they say hey if you apply for an Amazon credit card we'll give you fifty dollars off your purchase so I went applied for the damn stupid credit card which was in instantly got my $50 credit, so I only paid like $38 for this. So that's one way, you know, if you haven't opened a, a credit account with Amazon, if you want to buy a bunch of stuff and get 50 bucks off, that's one way I did that. I got this for 30 some bucks, which worked out pretty good, I guess. I'm happy with only paying about $40 for this. And, and it's, you know, it's made in China, but you know, it got here in a nice box, protected in this box, in a good box. Wasn't all bashed to shit. But, there we go, we need it. And it's one of them expensive items that's probably going to be a one-time use, and unless I level another machine or move the machine and re-level it. Um, so, leveling is one part. Then you're going to have to get a test bar which hasn't arrived yet and I'm going to have to make an addition to this video here because the test bar should be here in a few hours and that's the other expensive piece uh, but it'll make leveling and getting the 
twist out of your lathe a lot easier and more precise. So you kind of need something. If you can borrow one from work that's in good shape to save you a ton of cash if you're a machinist, you're all right. Or you can borrow one from somebody. Um, but that's how I got it. And that's how I got it for like 40 bucks. So I'll come back with the other expensive item and finish up this video. Okay, we're going to get into the last item we need here when you're leveling or uh, aligning your lathe. And what it is, it's called a lathe alignment test bar. Now, in all the years I've worked, it was always the maintenance department that would test the accuracy of the machine. They had people that did this for a living. That's all they did. Uh, what a lathe alignment test bar is, all your lathes, when you take the chuck off, there's a spindle, and there is a Morse taper, MT. Uh, you look up the specs of your machine, a lot of them are like three, four, two. Mine is a fairly large spindle bore, it's a mount, uh, MT5, Morse taper 5. And what I bought is what is called a lathe alignment test bar. Now, to take the taper out of your lathe or whatever, there's all kinds of techniques of, of turning uh, pieces, the donut thing. The simplest, quickest way to do this, I guess, and I've never done this, so this is all new to me, is with using what they call a lathe alignment test bar. And what it is, take a closer look at it, I got this on eBay, and this is a large one. They came from India took about a month or so to get here, but it did arrive. And what I didn't like, they put it in a plat it is cardboard box with a little bit of styrofoam wrap, bubble wrap, and then tape around the box. And that's how it traveled halfway across the world. But what it is, if this one's heavy, I ain't gonna take it all the way out. Is on one end here, you see where that is there? You got your Morse tape. This will go into the spindle and lock here. And then what protrudes out is this hardened ground uh, bar. It's about, let me see, what is this about? About two inches in diameter. Yeah, it's, it's probably metric, but it's about two inches or an inch and three quarters. All right, and then this, with this into your Morse taper, you would run your indicator on this hardened ground steel bar. And you can get these if you have a smaller lathe, like a 9 inch nad or your Morse taper, you can get these in different sizes. This one here came from India, it's $120 with the shipping. Okay? And uh, the smaller ones, like a Morse Taper 3 or something for a smaller lathe, they run less. They run about $80, $60, How this would be used is once you get it in there, you run an indicator across the top, and then you'd run an indicator across this. And it would tell you, you know, are you cocked or off to one side or the other. And generally what this comes from is you have to remember, a, a large lathe, like something that weighs 5,000 pounds with a cast iron base and everything's bolted, the ways are bolted into the base, that's not going to flex or move. Once it's set at the factory, you just pick that thing up and short of dropping it or busting up the base, it's probably going to be tuned in. When you get into machines, even the ones that weigh 1,000 pounds and at the 12 inches and lower, mine's machine's a 500-pound machine. That's going to have flex. Now, you get your stand or your cabinet or whatever, you bolt the lathe down, and you end up with taper. Well, what people don't understand is you're using level to get an idea of where you are, but when you bolt down your lathe to a bench, tool chest, or the stand, it's going to tip. So what you would do is you run your indicator on two ways, on the side and up on the top. And say you're out this way, say a couple thousandths or whatever. What you would do is then unbolt the feet of the lathe, and then you take the shim stock. That's why you got different thicknesses. You're going to have to experiment. 
put a little shim stock in one corner to like, you know, say you bolt your foot or you're laid down like this. Well, you're off a little ways. So you go to one side, put a five, you know, unbolt it, slip the 5,000 shim under the corner, bolt it down, and that would give a little twist. And then by using this, you could quickly and easily just shim up your lathe, no matter what it's bolted to, and get it to where when the carriage traverses the ways, this runs at zero, this whole length. And your lathe should be aligned to the ways, and then actually level. If it's not perfectly level, gravity-wise, that's fine. As long as the lathe is bolted down, and everything shimmed up to where when it traverses, it's 100% straight. See that? That's the confusion. Everyone says, "Well, you know, the lathe doesn't have to be level and this and." How do they put them on a ship? You know, well, yeah, it's true. But you got to align. That's why it's called a lathe test alignment bar. What you're actually doing is kind of leveling, but then you're aligning it, fine-tuning your lathe to get it to cut dead straight. Also, on the end of this, you can't see it. There is a little, uh, little center with a 60-degree like a center drill. And then once you get the lathe straight, you would take your tail stock and then put it in there with a little bit of pressure. And if you see it shifting this one way or the other, you'd know to adjust your tail stock. So this this device here, you know, would get your lathe and your tail stock all level, nice, and and um, you should be fine. And you won't be cutting the taper. Okay, unless it's cut or deflection or something else. It's probably the quickest, easiest way to do it and do it right. I mean, there's other techniques. I'm not saying that they're wrong or you shouldn't do them. But this does cost 120 bucks. Probably going to use it once. Now, this is the one made in India. If I had one made, first of all, it would be custom made. I'd have to call up a machine shop here in the States say, Hey, I need a, a lathe alignment bar. And I'd say, All right, we'll make you one. And they guarantee it and grind all of, you know, it's supposed to be ground together on centers. It's supposed to be ground a certain specification. A U.S. made one from a company to do it is $250 for the bar, and I don't know what the shipping is. So, even though I don't like buying precision equipment from a third world country, it saves you some money. You can get them on eBay. They're available. Uh, like I said, for a smaller lathe, like a 9 or 10 inch, you probably get away with one for 60 some bucks, 60, 80 dollars. Um, and you could get, you know, once I'll make a video on how to use this, it'll probably make the whole thing faster and easier. But then again, it's a tool you spend a lot of money for, you're only going to use one time. So that's the only drawback on it. Alright, so that's finishes up my video on uh, equipment needed for leveling and setting up your lathe.